asking me, retro gaming has never not been cool, but it's about to get just that little bit cooler. Analog's Pocket, a handheld console that plays original cartridges from a variety of systems, has just about made it to market in time for the holiday, and it's a lot. Analog is often described as a boutique console manufacturer. Instead of building a small PC that can run emulators, Analog's FPGA cores allow it to mimic vintage consoles at the hardware level. After some pricey NES and Neo Geo recreations, the company really hit its stride with the Mega SG, the Genesis, and Super NT, SNES, both of which were a hit with purists and casuals alike. Unlike those two though, the Pocket doesn't just emulate one system. At launch, it natively plays cartridges from any of the Game Boy variants. It'll also play Game Gear games with an adapter, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Turbo Express, and Atari Lynx adapters are also on the way. Another key difference to most retro machines is that analog products are designed to play physical media, not ROMs. This really is about doing the old school thing in a modern way with minimal adulteration. And the compatibility doesn't stop at games. Any of the original Game Boy accessories, such as the GB camera, printer, and any of the titles that had extras such as rumble packs or gyro sensors, they will work here too. And you can even connect the pocket to an authentic Game Boy for multiplayer fun. There are, of course, some modern advances that are deemed useful enough to not distract from the authentic experience. For one, the pocket has a backlit display something that didn't make its way into a Game Boy until the advanced SP, although there was the Game Boy Lite in Japan. The Pocket's 3.5 inch screen is also bigger than the largest on any Nintendo GB handheld and covered in modern Gorilla Glass. And while the Pocket's connectivity is limited, for example there's no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth built in, it does have a headphone jack and an IR port for the Game Boy Color games that support it, which is an impressive detail if nothing else. There's also no video out, but this can be added with the $100 dock accessory, which also allows for Bluetooth and USB controller connectivity, along with an HDMI port for connecting to that TV. It's definitely fun to play these games on the big screen, but in general, they don't look as good as you'd hope when supersized, and that's no fault of Pocket, of course. Battery-wise, thankfully, it's not a trip to target for a big stash of AAAs, the built-in 4300 milliamp cell is good for around 6 hours of playtime and it charges over USB-C. And obviously it's pretty clear that the Pocket's design was heavily inspired by the original Game Boy. Although one obvious difference is you'll find four main buttons, which is curious as every system that the Pocket imitates only had two. As you'd hope, there are also shoulder buttons around the back for the Game Boy Advance games, and of course the usual start and select controls. Those extra thumb buttons do make more sense when you take into account that Analog has not only partnered with GB Studio, which is a popular drag and drop Game Boy game making tool, it's also added a spare FPGA core purely for indie developers. How that gets used we'll have to wait and see, but if you make games in GB Studio you can run them right off of the Pocket's SD card using a proprietary .pocket format. So you get it, it's a clever little thing, but what does it play like? Well, when you turn it on, you will be greeted with Analog's minimalist operating system. Tap play cartridge though, and you'll be transported back in time. The Pocket has different display modes which can be switched in real time. When I played Tetris and landed on the original GB DMG mode, I was honestly taken aback by the fidelity. I've used several emulators on different types of devices and the Pocket is hands down the most authentic. Modern displays never quite seem to capture that vintage feel, but Analog appears to have taken great care to capture every pixel with every flaw, such as the visible pixel grid on the first Game Boy, motion blur if you want it, or the slightly washed out look of the first Game Boy Advance, it is all here. And along with those authentic display modes to match the machine it's emulating, Analog threw in its own modern takes. These are generally brighter, more saturated, and easier on the eye, so you can play like it's 2021 too if you wish. 
And thanks to that square display, original Game Boy games perfectly filled the space available. And that's not a coincidence. The Pocket's display is exactly 10 times the resolution of the original on each axis. Specifically, it's a 1600 by 1440 or 615 PPI LCD. This sort of detail is almost as important, maybe as important as running emulation at the hardware level rather than in software. Retro gaming has a storied history of using computational and display limitations for creative effect. If you've ever played old games on a modern emulator and display, you may have noticed something was a bit off and that sort of retro feel wasn't there. And that's why many emulators offer things like scan lines. The problem is, scan lines, in my opinion at least, are a bit of a blunt tool, and whatever analog is doing differently is making for a much more authentic experience. In terms of game compatibility, theoretically there should be very few titles that worked on original hardware that don't work here, if any. I only had 10 or so games to test with, but the only thing that was problematic was a US version of Mario Kart Super Circuit. The European version I had worked just fine, but the US one seemed to stall after loading. But such other quirks are very old cartridges. Perhaps there's just something off of the pins on that one copy and it doesn't sit right on the pocket, given that it worked in original hardware. The only other issues I had included a slightly weird crop on Mickey Mouse for the Game Gear, which Analog tells me it's already found a fix for, and then a very unofficial 108 games in one multi-car. That also seemed to at least open, but then it just hung. This dodgy multi-car also worked when I tried it in original hardware, but again, it's hard to know if it's just a physical quirk, pins aligning and that kind of thing, or something completely different. What did work though was the Game Boy Camera. It's always surprising to me that cartridges that relied on watch batteries to save would still work today, but both the camera and every other game I had with a cell in it seemed to still be going strong with saves intact. Either way, the Game Boy camera is a delight on the pocket. That backlight really helps. It remains, however, pretty awful on vintage hardware. Of course, three generations of Game Boy plus the Game Gear already opens up a pretty substantial library, but once the adapters for the Atari Lynx, the Neo Geo Pocket and the PC Engine slash Turbo Express arrive, there's a whole lot of fun to be had with this one tiny console. Notably, the last system in that list is technically more of a home console and not a handheld, so there's more than just portable gaming here. The Turbo Express just happened to take the same game cards as the home-based PC Engine. Such is the curious world of retro gaming. One of the bigger bits of news that landed just before launch was an outline of what Analog's own operating system will be able to do. And right now it's limited to playing games and some key settings, but in the future we can look forward to a complete browsable database of vintage games with shareable playlists, robust save state options, per game stats and more. And of course we'll cover that in more detail once it's available. What is present right now is a fairly comprehensive music making app, Nanoloop. And it's beyond the scope of this video to give a full breakdown of what Nanoloop is, but if you've ever seen or heard music made and performed on a Game Boy, this humble app is likely running the show. Or something like it. The version here is built right into the Pocket's OS, and it's not just a nice add-on feature. This is evidenced by no less than four different cables that allow you to connect Nanoloop on the Pocket to external MIDI hardware. Desktop music, MIDI software, other pockets and hardware with audio sync, such as Korg's line of Volkers or Teenage Engineering's Pocket Operators. Those are accessories though and will cost you extra, but it's nice to see that Analog is really supporting this feature. So how much does a bougie Game Boy with more than a few bells and whistles cost? And well, the answer to that is $220. The value proposition here though will largely depend on how embedded you are in retro gaming. If you already have a library of compatible games, it's a modest amount to get possibly the most authentic vintage gaming experience that you can find with plenty of additional perks and modern comforts. And if you're looking to get back into the scene, then you'll have to factor in the cost of getting a decent library to play on it. Either way, it's hard not to be excited to see Portable Gaming's golden era come to life again in such an authentic fashion. For more news, features and reviews, head to Engadget.com.